I was born and I grew up in Italy, but I'm originally come from one of the most dangerous, ugly, and undeveloped countries in the world, Somalia. Or at least, this is what the people think when they hear this name. Every time they hear someone talking about this beautiful East African country, they always say, oh, wow. Every time they ask me where you come from, and I say, I come from Somalia. I say, oh, you come from that place? I was like, yeah, where you come from? But uh, every time I always face the, this kind of situation where people ask you where you come from, and you, you, know, you feel a bit ashamed because the people make you feel that you come from the wrong place. And you know, there is a reason behind this, because like the Somalia was described for a lot of times in a very unfair way. And I like to think that sometimes we, you know, we are guided in a very wrong way because we like to see what we want to see without having the general picture. When, when you hear Somalia, usually there appear in your mind three things. Famine, so typical, typical thing. Especially Mogadishu, the capital city. Black Hawk Down. I believe that a lot of you watch this movie, you know? So I, I, I guess that if, you, if they ask you to go to Mogadishu, you'll say, oh, Black Hawk Down. <laughs> so yeah, maybe, maybe I'm going to somewhere else. And my favorite one, piracy. <laughs> uh, I think that thanks to this movie, we moved from uh, the nation of poets to the nation of pirates. <laughs> but um, this misconception of the country was always present, as I say, in my life. And uh, sometimes I really feel ashamed to be Somali. And uh, you know, I hope to be something different, because like, the people makes you feel different in that way. But despite that, I always wanted to be part of a possible change and, uh, you know, and try to be part of something or something different. And I tried when I was starting from the high school and then university to do research, try to figure it out because like I, I never been to Somalia before and I was like, okay, but what it is. So I like to divide Somalia and you know, the history of Somalia, let's say in three parts. And in particular, the history of Mogadishu, the capital city, which is the biggest city in Somalia. And I wanna ask you audience one thing. How many of you are over the age of 35? Can you please raise your hand? All right, if, if he was born in Somalia, this is the Mogadishu that you would have seen. Mogadishu was known as the white pearl of the Indian Ocean, one of the most beautiful cities that you could have found in, in Africa. Pretty different, yeah, from Black Hawk Down, I believe. <coughs> uh, you know, and sometimes, it's very important to try to open the mind and analyze the thing in a different way. This is still Mogadishu. How many of you are under the age of 35? <laughs> well, I have to be fair. If you was born in Somalia, and in particular in Mogadishu, and you was under the age of 35, this is the Mogadishu that you would have known. Still the same place of before, but just you know, consequence of a dark moment. Still, Mogadishu. But this is just a piece of the story of the world nation, and this is just a piece of the story of a country. And uh, it's very interesting to, to understand how the things can change, no? But in my case, my Somalia was very, very different from all of this. As I said, I grew up and I was born in Italy, so I didn't have the possibility to go for a lot of time. And uh, the Somalia that I grew up with was made by the memories of my families, the memories of the cousins. And you know, they always describe the first part, 
that I show you, the beautiful side of Mogadishu in particular. And despite the fact that, as you said, I was born in 1990, three, day, three years after the biggest you know, internal conflict in Somalia. And then Mogadishu in particular it became well known not to be the white pearl of the Indian Ocean, but more as you know, the symbol of a, of a failure state. And it became even common in the international cooperation to say, when there are missions for peace, well, let's not make this another Mogadishu. Well, but for me, all of this didn't make any sense. And uh, the, the Mogadishu that I saw was, in the Somalia that I saw, was completely different. Made by a smile of people, beautiful colors, and an amazing sky, people happy, so completely different from, uh, from, from the history of, of the country. So I'm an architect, and I specialize myself in emergency architecture because I always wanted to be able one day to contribute to my own country and try to give back with my skills. But um, I didn't really want to go as soon as I'd been there, as I actually wasn't planning at all. And before Somalia, I was working different emergency contexts from South America to West of Africa in Asia. And uh, I was trying to prepare myself for one day be able to go back and be prepared. Well, this occasion comes when my cousin comes to me and she told me, well, I, I want to go and uh, you know, build uh, this community center and this mosque, and uh, so can you do the project? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm going to do the project, but I ain't going to come with you. you know, I'm going to stay in here. <laughs> well, one month after, I was on a flight for Mogadishu. I, don't, I, I still don't know how that happened. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, and after that, my life completely changed. That was the point zero for me. It was the beginning of a new adventure. It was the beginning of a new story. And it uh, was the beginning of my architectural journey. Uh, but do architecture in, in an emergency situation is very, very complicated. But do architecture in a post-conflict area is even harder because you not only face the security problems, you face also a nation that is traumatized, a nation that has different priorities. And uh, you do architecture between different realities, the realities of the past that, I, that someone is still remember, nostalgia, and what it is right now. And still, you fight with the ruin of like a very more like crazy situation. But this is only one face of the same coin, because Mogadishu is one of the most developed city right now in Somalia. And it has a rate of growing very, very high. So the situation has changed a lot. But still, do architecture in this context is so complicated, because there are a lot, a lot of people that live under, below, under the line of poverty, a lot of people that are traumatized, a lot of people that do believe that architecture is not a priority at all. Say, when I was going there, I said, well, we need to do like certain things. I said, hey, I need my rice, you know? I don't need that, especially when you face certain situation. And uh, this, this general situation brought me to do an analysis and try to figure it out. How can I help? my own country and how can I give a service in the, for what it concerns the shelter, because shelter, having a house, is one of the human rights. And a lot of people doesn't have it. A lot of people was displaced. A lot of people live in the refugee camps, in IDP camps. So I, how can I make the people understand the need of this? This was my question. So as all the diaspora that grew up abroad and they come back to Africa, sometimes you go back with arrogance. You, you say, you know, I have a degree, I have a master, you just listen to what I have to tell you. <laughs> and they laugh at you, you know? And they say, hey, what do you want to tell me, you know? So for me, I try to go in another way. I try to listen more and speaking less. 
and uh, you know, I was very fascinating about everything that I saw because for me it was like a way to reconnect in somehow. Because I grew up with one step in the Italian culture and one step in the Somali culture. But I wasn't prepared at all. Thanks to my job, I had the opportunity to travel around Somalia and see different realities from the south to the north. And I had the possibility to experience different things. Sometimes uh, it was difficult, and sometimes uh, I learned that I didn't really know nothing. You know, sometimes I was just like, you know, like you can even have 10 degrees, but that doesn't change anything, because these people live in a very hard situation. And in order to do an architecture in, in there, you need to reconnect and connect with the people. But sometimes, you know, I try my best. Sometimes it was also kind of funny, I guess. I milk a camel. <laughs> and if you can see this photo, I'm pretty far from the camel because he was moving and I wasn't that sure. Everyone was laughing at me. I was trying to milk a camel. But, uh, and I believe that I reconnected a bit, at least with that camel. Uh, what, uh, what I'm trying to do after all this research, my final result was that, okay, in order to reconnect, in order to do an architecture that makes sense, you need to bring back the cultural identity, the sense of belonging that somehow we all lost. Sometimes uh, the thing that I noticed that is like pretty common in Africa in general is like, okay, we have African products, but you know, the Western ones are better. You know, why? It's, yeah, you're good, but let's, let me buy the other one. So I wanted to try to change these things. And how to do that? Well, I tried to take the most traditional Somali tools. Uh, this is a burjiko, a small burjiko, idi, sometimes. And uh, I tried to transform what is like the most common image of the cultural identity of Somalia in design objects. This one is a table lamp made with exactly the same material and exactly the same people. So I try to show to the people and, uh, and to myself too that it's possible to bring back the old culture and make something modern. On the same way, I work with the traditional Somali clothes. They are like very beautiful. And I made pieces of furniture. So, this is what I try to do, throw the furniture, but is throw architecture that I really try to give a biggest impact. And is actually through the architecture that I'm trying to give, to bring the people together, people that was divided by the, all these years of civil war, and try to reconnect them, and try to work with them, with the communities, in order to, especially in a post-conflict reconstruction, you need to feel that that building, that space is yours. Otherwise, you're going to reject it again. And for me, this sense of belonging was what I was trying to, to give. Uh, in September, uh, 14 October 2017, uh, Somalia was hit by one of the most terrible blasts in its recent, recent history. And more than 500 people died and lost their life. So I thought that, OK, maybe. Uh, it's not the right moment, or maybe yes, but I tried to give my contribute in one different way. So I tried to design a memorial for the victims of that event and try not only to remember the victims, but also to try to respond to a couple of problems. And through this memorial, what I tried to do was to respond to a problem that is related to the public space, to the use of the land, to this idea that you need to close in yourself in order to protect from the exterior uh, problems. So I tried to give an idea of opening again. And uh, same thing was related to this small community center and most for my family. And the idea was to try to use local materials and avoiding the modern technology, but trying to bring back the old way of build, the old colors. This is a project in the south of Somalia. And this red is related to the fact that the land in there is very red. And so I tried to involve the community, was with me, was working, was trying to give me their, their help. And 
the result was the construction of what's on the way of this, um, this community center and mosque. But uh, the interesting thing is that the community really got involved. The community really appreciated the effort. And they started to have a strong sense of belonging because it was made with them, for them. It was not something that was coming from outside. It was something made within the community for the community. Uh, another like tradition means trying to understand what is common and you always see, but that sometimes you forget. One of the, the things that in Somalia is very common but is the tradition of like drinking tea and talk. Sheko, sheko, and sha. No? <laughs> they said. So you drink, you have a conversation. Sometimes you go in your cafe, you sit, you start to talk, and then your conversation between two becomes the conversation between 50 people. You know? And so I had a possibility to design a restaurant and uh, try to use traditional clothes, traditional um, pictures, and uh, working on the idea to submit a modern architecture, but still traditional in somehow. And we are on the way to do that. And uh, hopefully people will like. Uh, but my work, my work was entirely you know, uh, made for the community itself. And my, my hope is that through the cultural identity of Somalia in my case, but hopefully through the other African country, we bring back strong sense of belonging. We become, again, proud to be, in my case, Somali, but all Africa. You know? We need to be proud of what we are, where we come from. And I believe that architecture is the representation of this cultural identity. Architecture can be a symbol of renaissance. It can be a symbol of a new modern era. And what I hope for Somalia is that we, through the use of architecture and through the buildings to bring back a sense of belonging, a sense of peace, and a sense of beauty in a country that was for more than 27 years destroyed by conflict, and hopefully also change the misrepresentation of my country, of the beautiful Somalia. And hopefully, I had the possibility to change your, your perception. Well, Mazente, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>